Welcome to another episode of Big Lee's Corner. All right, I wasn't going to do videos for a while. However, this is kind of a tribute to video to one of the men I appreciate most, Marvelous Mitch Ryder, who passed away. I don't know if it was Wednesday, Tuesday, but it was Wednesday when I first got the news from his friend, his best friend, Ricky Fetz, on Facebook. And I was like, what the fuck? Because I just spoke to him for the first time since October 2012. Since uh, other show, American Wrestling Association, pretty much uh, folded, I guess. But yeah, I haven't seen him all that time, even though his one of his students, Jameis J, didn't mention he wanted to talk to me. I kept on shoving it off, forgetting about it. So, yeah, I was, this was only the first time I spoke to him since. But anyway, I'll probably tell the whole story of a lifetime about... I go way back with Mitch all the way from October 30th, 2002. I haven't met him yet, but this is the first time I've seen him in action at 2002 CCW Stairway to Hell when he defeated Jason Kane. And then it was like a few weeks later, he was teaming with Bart Sawyer and Eric Acker against Damage Inc. But then on December 11th, he became my trainer. See how... I was Bart Sawyer's trainer before then, but Bart was, wasn't reliable getting there on time. So Mitch became my trainer on that first day. And I admit, he gave me the biggest reality amongst all of them. Uh, one moment he had me lay on that mat and asked me how much I wanted to be in this business. And, you know, I personally thought I wanted it more than anything. I wasn't, didn't realize I had other things I wanted in life. So, yeah. That kind of stuck to me. Also, give me forearms to the chest. Um, which I might add, one of those times, I remember my chest feel like it was hurting like fuck. <laughs> that after the CCW show, during the show, there was a heavy snow going on. But anyway, after the show, after I was de-icing my car, I took that chunk of ice home with me and slept it on my chest all night because it was hurting that fucking much. I think even senior referee Richard Brown gave me a few forums that day. I know he was up and teaching me the forums too. But anyway. And then another thing is on Christmas Day that year, which was on a Wednesday, the same night I was in training, you know, Mitch had this idea for a gimmick for me where I would wear this Hannibal mask and hospital scrubs. And for those of you that have been on my channel long enough, you know I introduce a character Ian Noah saying, apparently Ian Noah saying, yeah, the clothes of Ian Noah sayings was Mitch's idea. And then let's see what else. And then on January 15th, uh, he got me to do a run-in against Hoosier's best Don Seals, which I was supposed to jump Don Seals from behind with the forearm. Mitch made sure I threw a good forearm. That one of the things he said, if I didn't throw that good forearm, I'd be in that basement taking 45 minutes of forearms. So, yeah, that definitely talked me into it. I'll admit, I was real nervous as fuck. I was going to fuck up with that forearm. But no, I managed to throw, according to what they said, I threw a good forearm. Hitting Don from behind, Irish whooping him in the ropes. He hits me with a flying clothesline, throws me out of the ring. You know, as I walked the back, all I was concerned about is if I was throwing that good forearm. And Eric Acker walked me behind the curtain. And I asked him how I do, and he said I did all right. So, hell yeah. But yeah, I trained for him two more weeks, and unfortunately, in training, I didn't. Most likely, I didn't throw a good forearm. So he's like, he said if I was going to fuck up on the forearms again, he's going to cut me from training. But then after the show, he mentioned he could offer me a, try to train me to be a referee. And I was more like a week, I thought about it for a week. And I was like, I'd rather just not be a part of the show. So I dropped out of training. So yeah, letting him, Mark Wolf, and Chassis Asono all know I'm dropping out of training. And I really haven't spoken to him, but we kind of give it a nods to each other here or there. But until... It, and then he kind of went to jail for three years, but then came back to CCW in 2006. And then we started talking more and everything. And he was telling me he's starting this new show, XCW Midwest, up in New Albany. 
Cutting by I don't know if I really got much stories to tell about the, the first year of XCW. I got none in mind that I know of. But yeah, I worked for him for at least uh, five years, which started in June 2007. But two years later was where I really enjoyed the business when he started doing this Ground Zero show every Sunday in Memphis, Indiana. And he even let me spend the night at his house on two occasions because... Yeah, two shows booked back to back. Uh, one night in Corden, next night in Memphis. Also, we were at Walt's show this one day. This is one of the funniest stories I could tell you about this. After the show, uh, me, Robert, and this guy named Robert, and along with Mitch and one of his sponsors, Big Mike, were loading up the ring on this flatbed. Mitch had me unroll with this big ass banner. He didn't realize how big this banner was. But once I got it on the road, it was pretty much twice as long as the truck and flatbed put together. And when he seen how far I was, he had a good laugh at it. So, yeah, one of my funniest moments there. And then a month later in Corden, another one of my best stories. One of my best quotes from him, I might add. When we were, after we got back from recording, unloading the ring in Memphis, I was the first one to grab something out of the flatbed, but unfortunately, whatever it was, it pulled me into that flatbed. Well, uh, Mitch scolded the rest of the crew by saying, you know why that happened? Because all you were standing there with your hands on your hips. So, hell yeah. Good to know I wasn't the only one being scolded. That, I mean, good to know I wasn't scolded at all that night, whatever I'm trying to say. And then finally... My best final story I could think of was in Jasper, Indiana. After we were taking the ring down and everything, I was getting ready to aim for one of the ring posts. Anyway, as I was grabbing the ring post, Mitch told me to grab the paddings first. So I let go of that ring post. I went out the paddings, and out of the corner of my eye, I seen that ring post getting ready to tip over. It is inside my mind, it's like, oh shit, that ring post is going to fall, the armory is going to be pissed off, and Mitch is going to be pissed off at me, so I better grab that motherfucker. So I ran to that goddamn ring post, wrapped my arms around it, and it pulled me to the ground, <laughs> causing me to scrape a knee. But Mitch was impressed that I actually did that, because he mentioned he'd never seen anyone save a ring post from hitting the fucking floor. <laughs> but hey. Uh, Whatever, um, but hey, whatever damage it did to me, it's better that it did the damage to me than, uh, than him scolding me. But, yeah. Other than that, I got no, I can't think of any of the, any more stories really from those four incidents. So I guess I'll cut it off there. Anyway, that's all for this episode of Big Lee's Corner. Rest in peace, boss.